Let's have a look fairly quickly at Affinity Publisher and text flow around images and keeping images in line with your text and floating with text. Fairly straightforward and I'll take you through the steps. Now we've got here, um, we're on page 2 and 3 as you can see of um, what will we call it? The, the Square Children's Book Interior. It really doesn't matter. Now I've got a background, a yellow, a yellow uh, content background which is taken right out beyond the bleed line. I don't know if we can see that here. Just move that. You can see there it's right beyond the bleed line. That's been done on the master page, Content Master. That's what I've called it rather than Master A. It's called Content Master just for the sake of argument. And I'm going to use page 2 and 3 for what we're doing. Now that yellow background applies to everything. And I've come across a number of people who have tried to put their books through KDP. And KDP are saying there's a white margin down there and down there. Take your background colour right out beyond the bleed. Because anything beyond that bleed gets cut off. But anything inside the bleed may well show. So if your background doesn't go quite to the bleed line between your between your margin, your book edge, and the bleed line, that's the trim size there. But not all books trim neatly to that line. So be careful. Although this is um, a KDP template. But the bleed line there is the important part. Now, we're not dealing with bleed lines and things at the moment. What I'm going to do is take you down here to page 2 and 3. And the first thing, we'll put in a couple of, a couple of text frames. They show a green line there and there. There's one there. And there's another one there. Now, let's highlight this text frame over there. The first thing I want to do, having shown you that text frame, we're going to control where the text flows to. So that there, the little, see the little arrow and the sort of barbells that are next to it. If you click that and then click that, that tells publish it to flow the text from there to there. Now we can go back to there and let's put in some default text. As I said this is going to be a very short exercise. Insert filler text and there it goes straight to the next page. It's automatically flowed from that page to that page. Okay now we want the text to flow around an image. So Right there where the cursor's flashing, you can see that there's, um, I might as well put an image there. It's as good a place as any to start. Now, what I've already done is put that in the way, but what I've already done is create a suitable transparent background image. Now, I did that, let me bring it over, did that in Affinity Photo. Very nice. Dragon transparent background. Now I want that dragon in here but I don't want it to occupy the whole screen do I? That's no good. So we're going to put in a round picture frame rectangle picture frame ellipse. Now I think I had it about there. Hold the shift key down and drag it out to that size and it just comes to the edge of the border. That's fine, the text is underneath it. Now, this is really cool. I'll drag the image across from there to there and there's the image there. And you think, wow, nice, we've got the image in there, it fits neatly inside that circle, but the text is all over it. Aha, uh -huh. so how do we fix that? Go right up the top here, show text wrap settings. There's the text wrap settings and you can see that one 
the wrap style is by default. Now I'll show you some options here. There's that option. Text top and bottom. And what it does is put the text top and bottom. You may have a need to do this because you may have something else going there. Or you may want it like that. So that the text wraps around the image. Well it kind of wraps around. It kind of sets around the square. Let me do that again. But you can see there's no text behind it. Now let's see how we go. You can see that's square. Let's go tight. Now you can see that the text is around there and around there. Both sides. We only want it on the larger side. And you can see it's pushed the text out of there to back over there. Now do we want that text a bit closer? Left and right. Let's see what happens. Distance from the text on the left. Let's go down to one millimeter. Nothing happening. Zero. Now what about here? Makes no difference just there. Okay. However, what we've got here is two other settings. Let's check it on the inside. There's the text put on the inside. So all that text that was around it there jumps to the inside. Now you can have it inside and an edge. Um, I don't know really what use that would be. But that's the one there that we want. I'll put those back up to one point. Whoops. One point one. One point one. They were the defaults, you see. One point one and one point one. Now I don't want to close that at the moment. I'll just leave that there. And that's how easy it is to put text. You can adjust where that text sits around that. Edit wrap outline and reset wrap outline. Now you can change those things with that one. Do I want to detail that one? You can see how it's editing the wrap outline and it's just changed that there. So I won't move them now, but obviously those dots tell you that you can move it. We'll go back to there and double click on and just single click on there so that we've got we've got that around there. I don't want it square, I want the text out there. Just get all those things back where they were. Now the interesting thing with this is if you decide you don't want that there you can actually oops not move it <laughs> silly thing to do let's make sure it's back where it was undo transfer form you can move that up there you can move that over there now see how because it's set to the largest size it's pushing that text across there if I put that around it, there's the text all around it. Pretty cool, yeah? Okay, now let's have a look at one of the last things. I'll just push that up there out the way for a moment. What we need here is a shape. Now I previously used a, shape, a star tool. And I'm going to draw right there. Hold the shift key down and draw out a star so it's the right size. Not a very big one. Oh, guess who let go too soon. Doesn't matter. Let's draw that star sign out there. We can check the size of that star sign by selecting it and look down there. 36, 36 by 36. That's all you have to do to make it fully the right size. Now, layers, color, let's make that a yellow star, nice bright yellow star.
put the text around that tight and we'll close that for the moment will I or just move it down here just move it down here out the way because I might use it again in a moment now the other thing while the star is selected we can go up here and float with the text that means when the text moves the star moves with it or in line with text that means the it prints out wherever the text is so let's try floating with the text first you can see float with text put the cursor about there and and you can see when I press the enter key it's putting in a blank line here and the star is moving it's staying in position it's staying in position with that now make sure I've got that selected make sure I've got that selected now instead of that one float with text let's put in line with text and that really makes quite a difference that ignores what's over here and puts it in line with text now I'm presuming at the moment that it's just there let me get that cursor back there one space and you can see as I'm typing what it was doing was moving the text let's put that let's put the cursor there And you can see it's moving with the text we can get that out of the way that's that one there in line so if you want if you want an image to stay in line with something that's where you put it if you want the text to wrap around something that's where you put it that one there is over there it's in line but you might want to float and that actually puts it around there so that will, wherever that text moves it floats with the text paragraphs and everything see one one leaves that gap which you may not want and I don't think we can fix that with with that can we we'll see both sides left side my makes no difference you see square makes no difference makes no difference makes no difference so we can ignore that one because that one is selected and you can unselect it and it goes back to that what do we have? It's tight around there. And you can see as I'm moving that, that's three millimeters away from the text on the right side. On the left side, it's right in close. It's no distance at all from the star. So you can adjust where your text is sitting. So it looks nice. You can dress that up you can see how that was moving 1.1 1, .1, 1 millimeter that's pretty close that's pretty fine and really for putting text in line that's all there is to it let's see what it looks like when we export it pages two and three no don't worry about pre-flight warnings I'm not worried about that I don't want all spreads I want pages two and three export square children's book interior save is the one already there so let's just replace that now there's adobe and you can see how nice little pages are there there's the text wrapping around the image there's the text wrapping around the image now wherever they go that text will stay there because it's a P in a PDF anyway. That's all there is to it. So, text in text uh, images in line with text 
images with text wrapped around them, images with text through the middle of them. And of course you can put anything you like just about anywhere. So that's all for now. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I hope you enjoy these little bits that I pass along from time to time. You can have a lot of fun with this, especially with a children's book. You can put your images where you like and you can wrap the text around them and through them and over them. You can put stars in, you can flow text across uh, document pages, just as you like. That's it. Thanks for watching.